Australia's public affairs channel. Welcome back to Money Exchange. Joining me here in the studio is a regular host of Your Money, Your Call, Mark Todd, Director of Capital Finance at National Australia Bank. G'day, Mark. Thanks very much for joining us on Money Exchange. Pleasure. Pleasure. Tell me, yeah. you're working in one of the big four banks. What yep. are your colleagues and insiders saying at the NAB and perhaps under the, some of the other institutions about what we might see in the course of the next four weeks, the ECB potentially dropping rates, the US yeah. raising rates. What so, is your yeah. thoughts at the top in the town about what's going to happen with the US dollar and, and the Aussie? Let's start so with those So it looks two. like the... Um so the way I look at it the, at the moment, obviously the US has pegged itself that it'll go. It, 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 it'd be very hard to imagine. So it'd have to have a very good reason not to go and then be able to articulate that reason. So that's, that's a challenge. Even if you've got bad news, how would it then sell the bad news that has happened in the space of four weeks? And over the last basically six months, they've said they'd have two, maybe one, definitely one. Hang on, we've got to get this done. And so Fed credibility is sort of affected by that. And I think markets like to see the Fed on top of what it's doing, so it'll, it'll probably go regardless. Yep. So let's say they go, Draghi's famous for being able to talk a currency down, so it, it really likes the currency down, so I think he'll want to go with a lower currency just in the basis of it suits their uh, nascent you know, recovery. Uh, the, the problem with all that is that the herd is all that same way. It is a very overcrowded position, isn't it? Yeah, and so I think, I think I've been talking to a lot of people about the fact that I don't know that they price political risk at the moment. And I'm, I'm of the view that in January we start to see the election cycle really kick on in terms of the Republican candidates and the Democrats. Yep. And at the moment, the two strongest candidates are, is definitely Trump. Trump's, I've got some bad news, so I wanted to see what was happening today, but it's Trump and Carson. And therefore, if you had said six months ago that you would, there would be no moderate within QE, Yep. of taking on the Republican mantle. Uh, I just wonder how the market will react once they see the consolidation around who the Republican candidate will be. And because everyone's long, I do feel that the herd sometimes gets a little bit panicky coming off that trade. Yep. And therefore you might see, that's what I said when we came on, I wonder how you get short uh, the Aussie dollar. US. You yeah. know, like if you wanted to think of how the, those two currencies might play out, we are a high interest rate environment. And, you know, if, if that trade comes the other way, we might be that safety play like we were back when the Aussie went to 110 and rates were low yeah. in the States and higher here. Yeah, I don't see it going that far, but it's, it's that same theme. What's a safe haven if you're starting to say, I'm just not quite sure where the politics of this is all going. And, you know, they do fund, dramatically fund out of what the What about the geopolitical of risk at the moment with what's happened recently in Paris, with what's happened with uh, the downing of that Russian jet? Mm. You know, in both currency markets and stock markets, do you think that geopolitical thing, I mean, in currency markets, I tend to find that it's fairly short-lived and they focus yeah. back on the interest rate differentials. Mm. Do you tend to have that same sort of view? Yeah, I, I don't think... I don't think it makes a lot of sense to, to because you don't know how it's all going to play out. Yeah. If you look at 9-11 and then the ramifications for years, how that's played out, how would you have worked out what to do? Uh, while you're still deep in the despair of what a terrible tragedy it all is. So I, I think you need to look at what's your strategy, stick to your strategy, or then decide your strategy's changed. But if you, if you want to respond to a news alert, then uh, there's just not enough news alerts that, that'll drive enough markets. You, you just wouldn't be doing much. Now you're hosting Your Money, Your Call tonight. What have you got coming up on the program? We've got B1 tonight? and B2. We've got two Brian's. We've got Brian Parker from Sun Super and Brian Jackson from a, a company called MNI, Market News International. It's owned by Deutsche Börse. And they're great in terms of, you know, we're, I'm of the view that we've got this really low interest rate cycle for decades. Yep. I mean, we, we are here. This is it. This is normal. What about Europe next year? Well, obviously, with so, so much stimulus going into Europe, are we likely going to see a pop in European equities and outperform the US and Australia and Asia? Um, so part of the problems with Europe is just the demographics, just older. Yep. So how do you sell more? How do you sell, what are you selling? So that's the challenge that people are having yet quite come to grips with about Japan, Europe, all getting older. So what am I going to sell them? Yep. And the, the pop in equity markets might be on the basis of the carry trade, but I don't know that there's enough fundamentals around that to give me some confidence on that stuff. Mark, thanks very much for Pleasure. sitting in tonight. We were going to do across to London, but unfortunately the powers to be weren't able to get us there. I appreciate you dropping in. <laughs> thanks so much.
Now, before we go, I have two pieces of exciting news. I just released an updated version of my book, The 7-Minute Workday. And for a limited time, I'm giving away 200 free copies via the Money Exchange TV website. So if you're one of the millions of people who perhaps doesn't like working, you can jump onto moneyexchangetv.com. And if you're quick, you can download a free copy of my book. That's moneyexchangetv.com. Now, secondly, our final show for 2015 on Friday the 18th of December, it's going to be a one-hour currency special. We've lined up all our top economists and currency traders from throughout the year for the show, and we'll be giving you all our very best predictions on where all the major currencies will likely be going in 2016. So pencil the 18th of December into your diary and don't miss our last show for the year. We'll be back the same time next week, of course. We trust you enjoyed your show, uh, the show tonight, but most importantly, I trust that you've learned something. See you next week.